uh, I encountered radical theology through Thomas Altizer. There's a lot to say about him, but uh, uh, what I just loved was his idea that God is an idol. I mean, the transcendent God that you're supposed to believe in as something other, something supernatural. That God is just a distraction away from what's truly holy, namely this life, this planet, these relationships and these plants. To all types, God died to underscore the incarnation. We didn't get it the first time when Jesus died, so God had to die again. And that was at the beginning of modern thought, causing the secularization. It was when God died in our ways of thinking and believing, thinking about truth and reality. Secularization was then nothing less than God's way of saying, don't look up, I'm not there. Look down, be present just where you are and you'll find me. Uh, the supernatural God is not just a distraction away from what truly matters, though. Mary Daly, another key radical theologian, argued that, well, yes, some may say that we need to imagine a power that is other than this world in order to change it, a force that is truly free, liberated from any corruption or human will to power. But will anyone ever be able to imagine such a force without that force being somewhat similar to such free forces in this world? Will anyone ever be able to imagine a totally free and powerful being without that being somehow being modelled on what we know about free beings in this world, namely that they are male, white and heterosexual? In other words, a detached supernatural god is very likely to reinforce precisely those kind of norms and powers that we struggle to balance on this planet. In radical theology, when we do talk about God, we prefer to do so in terms of immanence. That's where the true mysteries are. Not in those man-created ideas and abstractions, but in the mysteries of things, bodies, relationships, organisms, the mysteries of this life.